Our first guests tonight are 13-time Grammy Award-winning musicians and the highest-selling U.S. female band in history. Their latest album, Gaslighter, is available now. Please welcome to the show the legendary Natalie Maines, Emily Strayer, and Marty McGuire of The Chicks. Thank you so much for being here. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Uh, it is lovely uh, to have you all here, albeit virtually. I know that uh, two of you are in Texas. Uh, uh, Natalie, you're in L.A. Um, how are you? How have you handled quarantine? <laughs> Splendidly. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, yes, I would say I'm definitely the most sequestered of the three of us. But I did have to go to the DMV, which is a scary place even without quarantine. But uh, my son turned 16 and uh, wanted his driving test. So I did uh, battle that. The scariest part of that was the porta potty. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they say try to avoid <laughs> porta potties at the DMV at all costs. But this is, uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, is it Marty? You also have 16 year old twins. Are they going through their driving as well? Um, they're about to. Yeah, okay. they have permits, but. Um... Yeah, they just turned 16 in April. Two, two at the same time. I'm, I'm terrified. Cause this, because of uh, social distancing, can you have a sort of driving instructors in a car with you? How does that work now? No, and I have been out a couple times with one of them in particular, <laughs> and it's, it's white knuckling, you know. Um, so yeah, I have my boyfriend take him out because he's, he's a lot braver than I am. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if you don't have a special car where you have that uh, that driver's ed brake on the passenger side, it could be a terrifying yeah, experience. Right. <laughs> and Emily, uh, congratulations in order. You, uh, is it your oldest that uh, that's getting into college, got into college? Yes, I got my first kid off to college and we didn't have to step foot on a campus. We just did a drive-by. <laughs> and then looked at all the majors that they had and it was a good fit and he applied and got in. And so I'm happy. That's congratulations. So he never saw, he never walked around the campus earlier in his life. It was just, it looked good and you drove by it and that was enough? He's familiar with that part of the country. So I knew he knew the area, the people and everything. It was just, we were just looking for majors more than anything. But yeah, we, we didn't do any, you know, uh, visits or anything like that. So it was, it's probably good for him too, though. <laughs> well, that will make his, whenever he finally gets on campus, it'll be a, a whole new experience. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, um, uh, congratulations on the album. Uh, it's fantastic uh, all the way through. Uh, the title track is fantastic. Uh, but certainly, um, the world we live in interrupted uh, the rollout of this album, up to including the fact that we were going to all get together uh, in the spring and day drink together. Uh, I was looking forward to it a great deal. Um, do you think you would have drank me under the table? Is that, uh, were you confident of that? What's, what's your drink of, what would you have been drinking? Well, I grabbed a tequila uh, right now. So uh, well, that's what, what do you guys drink. have? Do you have tequila. something? Tequila. Wine. Okay, Red great. Wine. <laughs> I mean, sorry, rosé wine. Oh, well, uh, I feel I like Marty would have been I under the been... table then. Right. We, we could drink you under the table, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. My tolerance has gone way up during Corona. Well, I think it broke one way or the other, right? I think people either um, really built up their tolerance or, or now people are total lightweights. I'm scared, actually. <laughs> Every day I ask do you, my boyfriend, do you think I'm an alcoholic? <laughs> and what does he say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think historically the people who have to ask every day are usually on the wrong side of it. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, if I'm willing to ask, I'm probably not. Marty makes eight pounds, so like two glasses of wine, and she's just like really tipsy. <laughs> what um, I, you know, a lot of people I think, especially in the very beginning of this, um, wondered if this would be a time that would um, increase or, or decrease their creativity. How did you find it? As uh, was this a time that you sort of thrived creatively, or or, or did you find yourself uh, being blocked? Uh, not musically have not created a single note. But I uh, always have craft projects and house projects. And around the holidays, I've been making reeds. Would you like to see? I would them? love to see a reed. This is okay, very I exciting. I thought you might. So I have them on hand. Oh, that's very nice. That looks professional. Thank you. Etsy professional. Here's one more. Let's see. Oh, this one's big. This one's for you. Oh my God, that is absolutely. Now, how long start to finish does it take to make a wreath that size? This one I may 
started yesterday and it took me, I'm going to say six hours. That's really that's it. That I seems about right. I watched uh, Real Housewives of Potomac and made that <laughs> <breath wreath. laughs> If, if uh, I don't know what could be more Christmassy than that. <laughs> Marty and Emily, were you aware uh, that Natalie was making wreaths? Is this, are you guys close enough as a band that this information made it to you? I didn't know specifically, but I did not, it was not a shock to me. She's always doing something like crafty. One year it was, it was latch hooks. She's going to be. <laughs> That's right. And then, you know. I did the entire, um, uh, what's the supper? The, the supper from the Bible. The um, last supper? Last the last supper. supper. I latch hooked the last supper. <laughs> Do you have that? I, I should stress to you guys, I'm not religious, and I got that right away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not real religious. <laughs> oh, she did. Well, yeah, she did a. You know, you remember the Big Supper? I don't think it's called that. <laughs> the, wait, was it the first supper or the second to the last supper? Stick no, to Reese. The last. Um, hey, this is a. Uh, uh, you know, this is a very. Um, uh, it seems to me that your fans, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, they, uh, when you guys release work, uh, because you have uh, fans that care a great deal about your work, they try to delve into the lyrics, especially, and try to find meaning in them. They, as, as sort of a, a brand of, I guess, fan sleuthing. Um, is that fun for you guys when people do that? And, and how close do they get? I don't watch a whole lot of it, but um, some of it's close, some of it's not. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, we didn't want to spell it all out. We wanted people to get to uh, sort of decipher the album for themselves. And uh, some, of, some of their guesses that I've seen have been right and some have not. I will say, I do not own a boat. And that seems to be everyone's biggest <laughs> question. Well, you should make one. You obviously are very uh -huh. crafty. <laughs> um, is it, you must, uh, you must all be excited, um, uh, you know, there's a, a million reasons to be excited for this to be over, but, um, I, I imagine, like, these are songs that you, you haven't had much of a chance to play live together. Not at all. Yeah. We were supposed to go, uh, we were supposed to release the album in May, go on tour in June. None of that happened. We had to kind of fight with the label to get the album out, because we just wanted everybody to have the music, but, um, probably won't tour for another year and a half. Uh, well, when the time comes that uh, we can all uh, be in places and rooms together, uh, I hope we can um, get our, our day drinking back in the books. It was a delight to talk to you all. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Thanks so much for having us.